This weekend at Bywell saw the Kriegoff 200, a unique event in the UK DTL calendar sponsored by Hall and Kriegoff. I took the opportunity to head down to the ground and spend some time with Alan and the team to talk about the event, the phenomenon that is the K80, and what it is that makes people want to own this iconic German gun. Enjoy. <laughs> Tell us first of all about this uh, this uh, this weekend's yeah this event Krieg of two hundred. Very simple. Long time ago, nineteen eighty nine, I went to the Grand American. Mm. I thought it was fantastic. Two days, uh, two weeks shooting, eleven 1, hundred targets a week. Mm. I loved every minute of it. Really uh, big shoots. Yeah, yes, big huge. shoots. You pull a squad in the morning, it's 575, you know. <laughs> um, 4,000 entries for the Clay Target Championship. Mm. It's just brilliant. But I love the concept. Mm. Uh, I love the fact that um, it's a uh, single shot, so it's less noise, less recoil, less cost, less pollution, and it's quicker. Mm. Uh, 15 minutes is quite a yeah. long time to shoot a squad. Mm. Um, it means that you can shoot 200 targets in the day easily yeah. because of the, the time saving. Uh, and handicap, that, don't get me started on that. We're not doing that this weekend, but that would be my dream to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it would I require just, quite yeah. an investment, though, because obviously all of the different yeah. layouts that get but, further away. Yeah, that's right, but it's still, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But anyway, that was the idea. We wanted, to, particularly in these times, we wanted to put a shoot on that was going to be fun. Mm. And I, I hope it is. We can only put it on and see how it goes, but... And we've been lucky with the weather. Yeah, oh, fabulous weather this yeah, weekend. It's yeah. absolutely well, I mean, brilliant. brilliant. It's, uh, I don't think I've ever been to Bible in such good conditions, to be quite honest. It's often nice here, but it's not just because we're up north. It is, it is, it is nice. Yeah. Well, you know, I've come from North Wales, so I know about bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> I've, shot, I've shot at Fort Degler, and um, yeah, beautiful on a day when you can well, see good, yeah. when you can see more than just the end of the layout. That's but, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was a concept anyway. Yeah. So for, yeah, yeah. And you're shooting the, is it called the Lewis system? Yeah, Lewis system. Yeah, which is this uh, way of sort Little of chopping up. Yeah. yeah, it's great. You kind of mm. chop up the, the, the entry, and there's prizes based on that, and it's dynamically done. It's really clever, yeah. and it means that everybody's got a bit more chance of winning some money, which is, let's face Yeah, just, just simple you take the total entry you split it into four groups mm -hmm. you take the scores and do the same at the same splits mm. and of course you'll have ties and then there's a, a very simple rule system for whether the ties move up or down the beauty of it is that it doesn't affect the top boys mm -hmm. but it does in so much as if they have a bad day mm. they may drop into another class right and uh same at the bottom. Somebody yeah. who has a good day will drop into a higher class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very good. It's hugely popular in America. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it'd be interesting to see if it takes off here. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. And I, I think it's just people are Nobody a understands it resistant to change. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then the options, which, which we're playing again. Um, the options, the way I put that is if 50 people enter the 25s mm. and only half of them do a 25 straight, you've doubled your money. Yeah. Straight away, yeah, because it's shared between those who did, yeah, uh, and that's a great system, yeah. You've run that at Bywell before, mm. I can't remember the year, but it was David Ball won the English Open, right? And uh, I was lucky enough to shoot 51 50 in a pouring rain on the, in the English Open, right? And I won more money than he won for the <laughs> so that's unlucky. You know, well, no, it's a brilliant system, I'm all in favor of that, as you can imagine. <laughs> So anyway, they, but the, all these things I brought back from mm. one visit to America. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Know. There are definitely um, some of the things about the kind of American style shoots that we could do with potentially um, looking at over here, just in terms of the... Uh, uh, it's geared up for a bit more kind of excitement and a bit more money and a bit more kind of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's, side games yes. almost. Yeah, it's, it's driven, I think, by the shooters. Mm. Yeah. You know, they, they won't tolerate it if it's not... You know, if it's no fun, they just don't. Yeah, play. exactly. So, exactly. Simple as that. Exactly. So, yeah. um, the K80. My baby. <laughs> yeah, well, quite. Um, the gun is um, renowned for its German engineering. Um, some superb features on it. Some quite unique features in the marketplace. Um, is, it, is it done, or are there some new developments coming that you're aware of? As you can imagine... It's produced by Germans. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fairly obvious. It's not all it's about... It's a Germanic it's, Yeah, gun, it's all about um, performance and reliability yes. and not about appearance. Although, as somebody once said to me, there are two people. You either love a K80 or mm. you don't know what you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's, they, they, they look good when you get used to them. The factory are constantly... Um, 
evolving. They, they've got a huge CAD department, a huge research and design department, and it's in-house, so it's, it doesn't matter on the economy, it's still there. Mm -hmm. We had a run, just to give you an example, of ejectors breaking. Right. Ejectors do, mm. you know. They work hard and then the end breaks off. They're a valuable part, so like, like they went So they went and built a machine, mm. and the machine has a K80 in it, and it opens, ejects, shuts, fires, opens, ejects, and it does it and does it and does it. And they kept changing the ejector until they found a design that passed 100,000 without breaking. <laughs> right, okay. And that's just one example. They yeah. do that with everything. Now, when, I, when you say it's not innovations, it's any time they find that there's a part that's giving problems. Yeah. Because, of course, part of what we do, we report back to them. Mm. If we see a particular part that breaks more than twice or three times, sure. oh, just maybe we need to look at this. And we note the serial numbers and feed that back to the factory. Because, of course, you do all of the servicing on in these the guns UK, in the UK. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, and so that feedback we share with the factory. Yeah. Um, then they improve the part. And this is a big concept of the service thing. Mm. Those little updates that the factory do on parts, when we service the gun, those are incorporated as part of the service. So the gun you get back is updated. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's important. They are always working on, on new things. Um, I know at times they've looked at developing another gun. Uh, I can't say whether they will or they won't. Yeah. But the, the trouble is that this is such a proven, reliable action. Yes. That... If it ain't broke, don't fix it, kind of thing. That's right. And it's, the other big problem is, I mean, I perhaps shouldn't say this, but the lead time for a new gun now, if I order mm -hmm. one, is 24 months, yeah. two years. Now, UK shooters won't see much impact from that because mm -hmm. all my orders for 2023 and 2024 are in with the factory. Right. But, of course, if, if I haven't ordered enough, then yeah. there could be a shortage. Sure. So we just have to play by ear. Yeah, yeah. But in that circumstance, it's very hard to change anything. Mm. But they are. The other thing is with the K80, it's a very handmade gun. Yeah. And no matter what you do, or no matter what comes off the machines, there's a certain bottleneck where you put it together. Yeah, hand fitting. fitting. Yeah. And that is something I know they're working on. Yeah. They're working to closer and closer tolerances to reduce the hand yeah, fitting. Yeah. Yeah. But in a nutshell, yes, that's it. The, the answer, I guess, is they're always refining and they're yeah. always looking at new things. Yeah. But it's, you don't always see the effect of that immediately. No, no. Uh, there's kind of a, quite a long flash to bang in, in development of products yeah. like this. The, the, the period of time it takes to sort of do that R&D mm. um, and actually then wind up with a proven bit of kit that makes it to the market with minimal defects. Because yeah. that's what you're looking for, is yeah. that kind of manufacturing... I work in engineering, so you're looking for that kind of Six Sigma. You want yeah. that minimal defect, and it wants to go to the market as a working piece. And the parts are tested, mm. and then America have some, we have some, mm. which we incorporate into particular guns, usually for some of our sponsored shooters. Uh, they shoot them like hell, mm. and we monitor whether that part is giving trouble. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we put it out into general release. Mm. So it's a good system. It's yeah. been working for a long time. So in terms of the kind of unique features that you don't see anywhere else in the marketplace, if you kind of come from the back end, the trigger on a, on a K80 is just unbelievable. If, you, if you've ever taken one apart and looked at it, it is a work of art in there. It is, it is like a Swiss watch, like an ETA movement. Um, and the trigger feel as a result is, is completely unique. Um, I've not felt it anywhere. You feel the reset. Yeah, it's yeah, very, yeah. very mechanical. It's lovely to shoot. Um, the sliding top latch, and the way that it indexes off that, um, that flange on the side of that top barrel um, gives a really, really solid lockup, and it gives a particular feel. Mm. Um, I've always shallow action as well. Yeah, yeah, the really shallow action, very long. The, um, the shape of the, even the shape of the top lever I've always found really good. It's, mm. it's like a sail. I mentioned, mm. like, I, one of the things I loved about my gun, that big top lever gives you plenty of sur mm. surface. It, it, there's no chance of missing it. You know what I mean? It's just a right nice thing to yeah. use. Um, the the barrels obviously on the on the super sport you've got this um, floating barrel concept with the barrel hanger yeah, this allowing you to tune um, the yeah. POI. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some other manufacturers have copied it, but I, is, are these kind of the first guys to do it? I can't say whether we were or not. I mean, we've had a floating rib concept for a long time, and before on the over and under, it was on the unsingle, yeah. which was a trap gun. Um, and that was a long, long time ago. There was a single barrel, mm. the rib sat off the barrel, and from day one that was pretty much adjustable. Mm. Um, and then, of course, 
somebody at some point sort of said, hey, can't that be put on a over and under barrel? Mm. And the answer immediately was, oh, it would be hugely high. But so the first one that came out was actually the Trap Special, which is a right. higher rim than this. Right. And then they've come out with this one, which is generally called the, the Pro, Pro Trap rib. or the Pro Sport or Pro mm. Rim. That's mm. right. Um, uh, the first ones had a, a wedge at the front, so you right. could change the, the wedge to if, uh, lower the point of impact, and these have got a wheel mm. now. Um, it's quite a quite a nice concept, and mm. a lot of people, I mean, if you look at Gabe and Miles, for example, mm. who's hugely successful in America, Pro Rib is what he's used. Yeah. And that's yeah, it. Yeah. Um, less popular, I think, in the UK. Yeah, definitely. Um, and definitely. I think that's for two reasons. I think the, the uh, Super Sport... Mm. Um, which has been around for a long time is hugely popular. That's what I had. And, and, and is always. And then, of course, we brought out the parkour. Yeah. And those guns, I think, are perhaps a little bit more British. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A little, little bit definitely. more. They suit our market better. Yeah. So. I mean, we've got a K20 here, and this yep. is, I think, still my all-time favourite 20 ball. I tested one of these a while back, and what a fantastic bit of kit it is. Um, scaled down, beautiful to shoot, really, really nice, mm. svelte, everything you want from a 20 ball, but with, you know, it's a Kriegoff. Fabulous bit of kit. Yeah, and it's, it shares most of the components yeah. as well inside. Yeah. Uh, that took quite some doing. I bet, I bet. Uh, to get that done. But it, it makes sense because you've got proven, you don't have to start again. Quite. Um, and, of course, now you've got the Parkour X, which is the yep. heavier weight barrel, which I'm really excited to try. There isn't a press gun in the UK, I gather, at the minute. No, we, we, um, <laughs> we've never had a spare barrel set. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sort something. <laughs> yeah. I want to it's, try one. Um, I'll be quite honest with you on this, right? The Parkour... Uh, from the day we launched it, mm -hmm. is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The handling, I don't think there is another gun that handles like it. Yeah. Um, it's just so responsive, and the most the reaction most people give it to, they can't believe it's 32 inch. Yeah. It's just, what? You know? Yeah. The Super Sport, um, you know, is just such steady handling. Yeah. Uh, it makes you look good even on a bad day. Yes. Because it's, it's steady, it's, yes. it's, it gives faults. The Paco doesn't. Yeah, no, so, no, 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 definitely. More, yeah, more so gamey, more British. That's, that's right. And, yeah. and if you're on a good day, the Paco is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a bad day, you it's can struggle. Punish you. So the Paco X was between the two. Yeah. Um, it was to impart a bit of this handling to the, to the Paco. Yeah. I personally don't like it. Really? No. But only because... I. I'd, and if we'd have started with the Parker X, it wouldn't have sold because people would have picked it up off the wall and thought, well, oh, it doesn't handle very yeah, nicely. Yeah. To me, it doesn't handle as well as the Parker or, or the Super Sport. Because it's halfway house. Yeah, because it's like all things, isn't it? It's that handles device. great for yep. its purpose. That ha the Parker handles great for its purpose. The X is a compromise. Yeah. And the compromise doesn't shine out at anything. Mm. Nevertheless, but it's proving very popular. Jack of all trades people gone. are shooting very well with mm. it. Uh, and I mean, at the end of the day, that's the acid test. It doesn't really matter, as I always say. It doesn't matter what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, if the customers want it, they shoot it and they like it, Yeah, that's great. We'll make it. I recently re-reviewed um, a K80. We had one of these come in um, yep. with a Super Sport barrel, and it was just so pretty. I did a, a little uh, mini review on it. Just I missed because that. I thought for that do, one. Do, do, honestly. Um, and I, and I, I said it, it, it. I do I do follow what you do, but someone missed that one. So. No, well, you should yeah. have a look at this one because mm. um, I think I described it as like moving an artist's paintbrush in the sky. When when you're on it with the Super Sport, yeah. it just has an ability to be driven through a target and you've got that momentum. And you can shoot it fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I used to shoot ski, trap, everything with mine and I, I do the same now, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, I don't feel that you need specific guns for different disciplines. If, no, if you no. can shoot, you can shoot and one gun be the master of it sort of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I, I think they're a superb bit of kit. Why do you think that, that, that Kriegoff has Worldwide, it almost there's like a cult of Kriegoff. The, the, the you know, following you, that it does. You asked have. me this earlier, and I've, luckily I've had some time to think about it. <laughs> it's not, it's it's not an easy question. Yeah, because it's a, it's a gun. It's well made. It's pretty or not, depending mm -hmm. on your point of view. But I, you know, I can tell you what the difference is. Go on. Um, because from the from the factory down through uh, the so the managing director Phil Kriegoff at the mm. factory through to us through to our dealers. We actually care about our customers. Right. Um, and a customer is free to email Phil Kriegoff and mm. say, hey, I'm really not very happy about this. Right. And Phil will immediately pick up the phone to me. Do you know about this? Has mm. he spoken to you? And we'll have a chat about mm. it. We'll reach out to him. 
and they care. Mm. I mean, and Phil doesn't just say, okay, I'll leave it to you now. Yeah. Phil expects that I will report back to him. Sure. And I, I, I mean, I can't speak for other companies, mm. but to me, in my experience, that's unique. Mm. It's, it's unique where you can go straight to the manufacturer uh, with a grievance and be heard. Mm. And I think that philosophy, it, it comes through all of us, through their sales team, through the people that work in the factory, through us, mm. we care. I mean, the, when I saw, people sometimes complain and the, I always think, well, it's not in my interest to make you unhappy. Mm. I want you to be, I want you to ring up and say, I'm really pleased I bought a Yes. Yeah. Why would I want it any other way? Absolutely. So, so we care. Mm. And my dealers care. Mm. I know Paul does here. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if, if the society's thing, sometimes we'll send a gun back and Paul says, oh, I don't think this is quite right. Mm. Brilliant. That's what we want from yeah. the dealers. Yeah. Because uh, we're not it's we're that good human. feedback. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? People make mistakes, yeah, mistakes, and if you're willing to own them and rectify them, then that's half the yeah, battle. And that's it? what we would. That's what we want to do. So, in in answer to your question, I think I think, and I, you know, that's why I deal with Kriegoff and yeah. why I always have, mm -hmm. because from the very beginning, they've had it with me that um, if I make a decision, mm -hmm. even if they don't agree with it, they back me with it. Yeah. And the trust is there. Mm. I can say to a customer, I'll tell you what, we'll do this. Mm. And I don't even have to think whether Kriegoff are going to say, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Because they won't. They're just going to back you. They just do it. That's fair enough. Yeah. That's exactly what you want. So, so in terms of ordering one of these, um, there's a little bit of a unique situation in the UK because you kind of pre-order all of the kit. Um, you can kind of build up the gun that you want. And we've got quite a selection here in terms of different engravings, mm. um, foreign styles. Uh, yeah, we've got a um, two Montys and a Sporter. Um, there's quite a lot of options that you can pick out sure. on one of these mm. guns in terms of uh, styling. Do you want to just give me a quick run yeah. through? Well, the concept to begin with is a modular system. Yep. Right, so you've got the heart of the gun, which is the receiver. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can fit an any number of barrels and any number of sets of wood to it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole concept of the gun mm -hmm. um, and that's why the barrels for example have a different serial number yes under european law if a gun is made as a single entity and sold that way it only has one number mm -hmm. if the barrels could be used on multiple guns they have to have their own yeah. number so that's the modular system here in the uk because um we've got Irwin, who is mm -hmm. a qualified gun maker and factory trained Indeed. and of course i i started doing uh, uk service for Kriegoff in 95 mm. so for that reason and to save them production time, they will allow us to buy just receivers, just barrels and just wood sets and assemble the, the gun here. Mm. Um, that has a big benefit to all of us actually mm. because we can keep receivers on the shelf sure. and wood sets and barrels. And if you've got a customer for a super sport, mm -hmm. Renaissance, Color Case Hardened, and, mm. uh, that's great, we can put it together. Yeah. But we've also got its same gun available for a different mix. That's, I think, is a big benefit. It gives yeah. shorter delivery times. Yeah, absolutely, Cause, yeah. Because Paul could ring me up and he could say, oh, I, I need a, a Vienna um, Super Sport. And i say, oh, I've got one in a Parkour's, I've got one in a Parkour's X, I don't have a Super Sport. But, and we don't, we don't keep them ready assembled. We keep the barrels and wood and everything got separate. You. And we build them mm. when we get your order. That's got when you. we put them together. Yeah. Um, and Irwin, you know, you know Irwin, he's fully qualified. Absolutely. He's a far better gunsmith than I will ever be or will ever have been. Um, <laughs> he's well he known it, in the community, yeah, that's he for is. sure. He's well known, he's respected everywhere. And if he puts it together, make no mistake, it's, it's factory. Mm. It's done right. Yeah, yeah. And they Super. know that and they trust him. Um, well, exactly. And I, I, I mean, I, I know from when I own mine um, and having it serviced, um, the turnaround was really quick. I thought the servicing price was pretty bloody reasonable. And the fact that it came with a little bag of all the bits that he changed <laughs> yeah. was pretty cool as well, because, yeah. you, you know. Um, and it, it felt like a new gun when I got it back. It was great. Um, so what are your kind of your best-selling combinations or your best-selling uh, kind of... Uh, uh, that varies from day to day. One thing that's been quite interesting uh, in recent years, 30-inch barrels, they go in the way of 28-inch. Aye. Um, I can't remember when we last sold a 28-inch gun, God. and it's getting that way with 30. Yeah. We, uh, my old gun is 30-inch. It just suits my belt. Mine was a short and stubby, you know, yeah. same as a gun. Yeah. Um, and I shoot well with it. It mm. doesn't matter. But now, I mean, when we brought the parkour out, mm -hmm. we immediately brought it out in 30-inch, and we yeah. took great care to keep the handling the same. Mm. 
we hardly sell a 30 inch yeah the 32 inch feels so great that I suppose yeah, people yeah. think, well, what's the advantage in? Yeah. Because you see, with, with the parkour, if you put a shorter barrel on it, you can't lighten this end anymore. So it's going to yeah. be stock heavy. Yeah. So the 30 inch barrels actually have to have the same yeah. balance or weight, if you like, as the 32. So yeah. I guess when you look at it that way, why bother with the 30? So in answer to your question, 2012, when we launched the parkour, we couldn't sell enough of them. Yeah. In fact, it killed the sales of every other gun, almost stone dead. Everybody wanted the parkour. Yeah. And, and that's been steady. Mm -hmm. That's been like that. Uh, and then all of a sudden, all the people who rushed to a parkour said, you know what, that handling doesn't suit me quite yeah. so well for what I do. So we've seen the super sport uh, start to come back. And I would say right at the moment, the sales are pretty much even. Right. Parkour and super sport. Uh, with quite, Parkour X, I'm going to include a little bit with the parkour mm -hmm. because that tends to be sure. you know, the natural progression. Numbers of these in the UK with the floating rib mm. are low. Yeah. They're very, very popular in Scotland. All right. Uh, and I guess that's uh, Kevin Smith mm. um, shoots trap with one. Um, and of course, if you've got a successful shooter, then everyone yeah, else thinks yeah. that's the emulation. Way to go. And they are, but they they're quite strange. So we have a pro trap stock, but we have the trap special stock, which mm -hmm. is higher. Okay. For the higher rib, but the Scotties use the pro rib with the trap special stock. Okay. And nothing wrong with it. They yeah, yeah, well fair enough. So, and is there a is there a particular foreign style that tends to go better? Um, they're kind of both nice as a as schnabels yeah. go. Well, it's yes. That that's uh, the only. Well, it, no, it's not the only for any four end will fit any gun, yeah. of course. But we we brought out the um, parkour stock and what London pattern for mm -hmm. want of a better word forearm yeah. with the parkour, and that's now migrated on to the um, super sport yes. as well. And then of course we've got the hybrid stock, which is another thing altogether. That's a standard stock for the parkour. Yeah, that is a hybrid stock, right? Uh, which was developed primarily to have a very uh, English style trap stock. Okay. But it all started when, first of all, um, our friend uh, Mark Windsor picked it up and he said, <laughs> right. oh, he said, that's perfect, I like that better than mine. Oh, thanks, Mark. <laughs> you know? And then, um, of course, Martin Myers uses the same uh, stock. In fact, yeah. people generally ring up and ask for a Myers stock. Right. You know, that's okay. quite funny. So that's now on the Supersport particularly, it's got a huge following. Yeah. So, nice that we've got two options. Mm. So, yes. So, and... Um, the long story short, the fore end of style is tended to stay with that. Yeah, yeah, I figured. This version does have a slightly thicker fore end, but it's not something you can visually see. Okay. But it is just, it's two mil wider. Okay. Yeah. At the base or uh, right just the here, It's just a slightly more swell. Okay. It, if you get the light right, so you can see it. Just a bit more rounded yeah, to the, just to just the, the body. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. I get it. And again, that's deliberate to help compensate mm. for the slightly heavier stock. And is there a, a sort of an engraving pattern that's big this year? <laughs> the, the engraving I find on these tends to be, it has a quite a Germanic feel yeah, to yeah, it. It's it got that kind of... Not all of them, though. We no, do have some no, fine no. patterns, of course. But yes, um, Eleganza, uh, is that the Sovereign? Yeah, and that's a Vienna, I think. Yeah, and the Renaissance Color Case Arden. Right, those are, those are mainstay patterns. Yeah. Um, you know, Vienna, Sovereign, all of those. Mm. That's a Harmony, a Symphony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the all day long shells. Yeah. Uh, the, the the standard patterns now, uh, yes, they still sell, but mm -hmm. whereas once upon a time they were probably 90% of sales, now they're probably 10% of right. sales, if that. Yeah. Colour case hardening has been an interesting one. Yeah. Um, that's in recent years, that's become enormously popular. Oh, it's high very end pretty, especially yeah. with that. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of, of gold no, on I guns, don't. but this has been done with. A little bit of elegance to it. It's just yeah, it's not, not in your face. Yeah. Exactly. And if you see that in uh, a, a gold colour case. Oh, I've not seen one. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Oh, it's, it's you know, Glorious. we had one done almost as a, a kind of an experiment. I think I saw one on one of the American sites. I right. Think and uh, everybody went, wow, mm. when it came over. Yeah, I've so, seen the, the Americans tend to go for kind of a really loud wood. I've seen some very mm. loud guns in America where they've got this kind of very pale maple. Yeah, I quite uh, like that. Sorry. Really? Uh, <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take it or leave it. My, in the UK, people say, oh, I want a dark stock. Yeah. And that's fine. But I always think if you've got a nice piece of wood, you should be able to recognise that across the car pack. Yes, fair enough. And if it's a dark piece of wood, you can't. That's true. That's true. I, I like the a bit of honey and dark. dark. Yes. Honey yeah. and dark wood is, is beautiful. Yeah, it, it, um, it gives you that... Across the car park, kind yeah. of, oh, yeah, kind of yeah, thing. You know what I mean? Right. That's what you want. Yeah. The maple, 
Yes, it's it's nice when you've got it in your hand. It's not quite my taste. It's very no, pale, but it's they, very they pale. do love it there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan, listen, it's been a really fantastic talk Super. to you. Thank you and very you. much indeed. I um, much enjoyed it, and thank you for the opportunity. No, no, honestly, I, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. If only to see if I could get a Parker X of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. um, yeah I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Um Look, fabulous to talk to you about the guns, and fabulous to talk to you about this, this weekend's event. Thank it's you. Been great. Thank you very much yeah. indeed. <laughs>